after today, we'll have 113 members of the Tiger Hall of Fame, the Tiger Athletic Hall of Fame. And these three individuals today do nothing but add to the quality that's already in there. And also, I'll draw your attention to the monument over here, Tiger Hall of Fame. There'll be three new names added to that monument in, in due course. Let me recognize a lot of guests here. We have a, a good crowd here. One of our board members, Ann McDonald, is, is here. We have former Superintendent Bruce Wood and uh, Judge Wood here. You can't do it without saying hi, Coach Gooden. Coach Gooden's here. Uh, we have Mayor Pro Tem Charles Whitaker, Steve Rogers with the city, Mr. Coward, former board member back there. Am I missing any other dignitaries? And then we got Monique Choice, the AD Secretary, and she is the official keeper of bad attitudes in the district. I'm kidding. Uh, Representative Gooden couldn't be here today as a soon-to-be congressman. Lance Gooden, he's a friend of the Tigers for sure, and we appreciate him. I think I've got everybody. Coach, you see anybody that, I, that I've left off? All right, I'm going to turn it back over at this time to our athletic director. I think 47 years. 49. Oh, excuse me, I stand corrected. 49 years changing the lives of kids for the good. Buster Lee. Yeah. I'd like to welcome you to the 20, 2018 Terrell Tiger Athletic Hall of Fame induction ceremony. This year's inductees, Kelly Richardson Dyer, Bill Griffin, and Richard Tolbert, join a group of more than 100 distinguished student athletes who graduated either from Terrell High School or Burnett High School. Our three inductees were nominated based on their athletic achievements and strong character. Our first inductee, Kelly Richardson Dyer, graduated from Terrell High School in 2001. Dyer was a member of the Lady Raiders, or Lady, excuse me, Lady Tiger volleyball team, a member of the, I did, I paid through two, two kids through Texas Tech, so I, guns are up because I, I'm still paying. Oh, that's why I'm at 49 years and still working. Oh, that, no, I'm just kidding. Sorry, I, I got off track. Uh, graduated from Terrell High School in 2001. Dyer was a member of the Lady Tiger volleyball team, a member of the cheerleading squad, and competed on the track and cross country teams. Most notably, Dyer helped make Terrell High School history by being a member of the very first Lady Tiger softball team after spending her freshman year as the starting third baseman for the boys JV baseball team. By the program's third year, Dyer helped lead her teammates to the Lady Tiger softball first ever playoff berth. During her time on the team, Dyer was named second team all region as well as all district for her outstanding play as an infielder. Following graduation and the bombings of the World Trade Center on September 11th, Dyer chose to defer attending college to serve her country in the Texas Army National Guard as a medic. Dyer served six years in the military, earning the rank of sergeant. During her 12-month 12 12 tour of Kosovo, Dyer com completed the majority of her Bachelor of Applied Arts and Science degree and graduated cum laude from Texas A&M University upon her return to the United States in 2009. Dyer then went on to earn a Master's of Educational Leadership from the University of Texas at Tyler and is currently in her third year at Texas Tech University working toward her PhD in curriculum and instruction with a STEM focus. Kelly and her husband Ross had two beautiful children Sydney and Rayleigh. Unfortunately, Kelly is not able to be here this afternoon. 
uh, with an engagement that was, uh, did not enable her to come today. She will be at the game tonight. So we will be able to present her with these awards that she has earned and deserved in the induction. She sends her regrets, but she will be here tonight to get to know y'all and get to be a part, so be sure to welcome her at this time. Our next inductee is Bill Griffin, who graduated from Terrell High School in 1964. Known today as the official voice of the Terrell Tigers, Griffin is no stranger to the field of competition. During his career as a Terrell Tiger, Griffin was a member of the Terrell Tiger varsity football team as a wide receiver and tied in. He played guard and forward for the basketball team. He also competed in the high jump hurdles, 400 meter relay, and ran the mile on the track team. He also earned a position as first base and third baseman on the baseball team. In 2016, Griffin was recognized in an on-field ceremony for his 50 years of service as the voice of the Terrell Tigers. In 2017, the press box at Memorial Stadium was renamed and dedicated in his honor as the Bill Griffin Press Box. In addition to being the voice of the Terrell Tigers, Griffin served on the Terrell ISD School Board for 18 years, was president of the Booster Club, he served on the City of Terrell Planning and Zoning Board for 15 years, and was chairman of the annual Bold Brothers Memorial Golf Classic for over 20 years that helped it, and it, that was an event that benefited graduating senior athletes from Terrell High School. He also announced basketball games for 35 years and baseball games for 36 years. Bill and his wife Linda have one son, John, and two precious grandchildren, Sophie and Gray. And at this time, I'd like to present to you an honorary inductee, Bill Griffin. If you will come to the table, we'll give you a word of hope and your pride. See, they made one mistake and asked me to speak. <laughs> and going back in track, you had fond memories. And some weren't so fun. We're talking about track. Somebody might say, you run a mile? Well, the reason I ran a mile was because me and another fellow track man, we did a little something at a track beat that wasn't appropriate. I mean, it wasn't ugly enough, but we just didn't mind. And so since we had a uh, opening. He came up to me and Coach Lecter said, uh, you remember what y'all did earlier or something? I said, yeah. He said, well, uh, you're gonna run the mile. You and, and Wilburn by who it was, never will forget that. I said, I'm gonna do a what? He said, you're gonna run a mile. He said, and you're gonna be in there running and you're gonna finish it. I said, yes, sir. So I ran a mile. Uh, of course, I didn't win or place or anything, but I finished about supper time. <laughs> But, you know, you look back at things, little things like that, you remember back when you were in high school a long time ago, and uh, one important thing I've always seen over all the years, uh, it's, a team, it's a team game, what it is. Anything you do in athletics, you know, the spirit, the competition, the character that builds character, and I'll be honest with you, a lot of kids would not have finished 
high school if it wasn't for athletics. And you're looking at one of them. My father uh, passed away two weeks before I started my sophomore year. But he came to everything that he could. He worked at Chance Ball, which back in those days, the way he got there was old Highway 80. And he'd come in late, he'd get to the game everywhere we were. So it's really important to me and what he did, he didn't get to see me play in high school football. And I was fortunate enough, uh, I was only sophomore at that time on the varsity squad, and I, only, and I was the only sophomore that I started that year. And uh, I remember him every day. I always looked up in the stands, he's there. So family participation in important athletics. And unfortunately, there are some kids that hasn't got a father around or a mother around, but they got close friends. And where it's still in my mind was several years ago, we were in Palestine, Texas. Well, they had a father-son night, you know, before the game. The fathers wore the traveling unit jersey, and of course, kids wore their uniforms, and they introduced them, all the fathers lined up. and came. Okay, well, I was president of the booster club that year, said, so we need to do that next year. Well, we did. And I didn't realize then how many of those kids didn't have a father, or the father wasn't around, or what. And it wasn't one of the game for the coaches. They took turns in line escorting the players. And that is still in my mind right there. Uh, something needs to be done. You know, what can you do? And it's still that way, this, you know, this day and period. So that's the kids that are lost or need that help. And uh, it's very important. And that's why I've been involved with athletics. And if I see kids that has a possibility of doing better, I'm, I'm no rocket scientist, but I think I know a little bit. You know, I'll tell them, you know, and I'll try to talk to them. And uh, hopefully that helps a little bit. And that's what a lot of people need to do. They see someone that has the ability uh, to be a leader and not a follower all the time. You need to talk to that, that person, a kid, boy or girl, whatever it might be. So it's very important, things that I've seen over the years, what's happened. I remember when John was in high school, we went to every golf tournament he played in and basketball or football. And I remember in the eighth grade, we played Paris up there and John was quarterback. Well, uh, we had a good friend, some of you might know him, Mark and Nancy Hudson lived in Paris at that time. So John got his knee hurt. And so just so happened, Mark knew the bone specialist up there, orthopedic surgeon up there, and he called him and said he's going to meet us at the uh, emergency room. So we went to the emergency room and the doctor looked him over and John was sitting on the table, you know, being there in his uniform and looking at his knee. He says, uh, doctor, is this going to hurt my golf swing? <laughs> the doctor said, what? <laughs> he said, yeah. So he knew the ability that he was going to have, and we did too, that uh, he could possibly get a good scholarship at that time, in which fortunately he did. But he had someone there to back him up, and that's why, you know, a lot of y'all and know people that can help kids to back up. That's what needs to be done this day and time. Uh, we're very fortunate, I'm gonna brag a little bit on our athletic department. Uh, when we were, at, we were fixing to hire a new coach, I remember uh, this time that I heard a name come up, Mike Shields. Well, being in the, Announcing all these years, I met a lot of coaches, a lot of coaches know me. And uh, so I heard Mike Shields' name. I said, there's no way we're gonna get him here. Well, fortunately, I don't know, I might be wrong. I think him and the superintendent didn't have the right idea of the world on a program. You know, you run an athletic program, you need to let him do it. So I think word got out, he might be looking around, but he didn't go looking, we went looking. and. Uh, uh, I said, there's no way we're going to get him. I said, do you know Mike Shields? I said, yeah, I know him. He's a good coach. Well, fortunately, he came in and took over, did an outstanding job. He came in with Buster Lee. And I want to tell you what, we were very fortunate to have those two people, Buster Lee, the athletic director, and Coach Shields. He has come in this field house, and he straightened it out, both of them working. And you can ask for better people and better characters than those two. I very appreciate them, what they've done for our athletic department. And it gives a lot of character to our athletic department, and that's why it depends. So I'm gonna quit talking, and I appreciate it, and uh, I'm glad to see some old folks out here. I'm saying old friends, not old folks. <laughs> so, but I appreciate it, and thank you very much.
Real quick, we had Monty Westbrook, one of our board members, either step in or I just didn't see you, one of the two, but uh, Monty's a heck of an asset to any school board and, and gets what athletics is about. So. Our last inductee, Richard Tober, graduated from Terrell High School in 1980. Tober competed in, on the Terrell Tiger football team and was a member of the high school basketball and track teams. During his junior year, Tobert was named All-District for his impressive performance at the safety position and received the honor again as a senior, along with being named All-District for his outstanding play as a wide receiver. The highlight of Tobert's football career came during his senior year when the Terrell Tigers delivered an upset victory over the McKinney Lions who would eventually go on to win the state championship at the end of the season. Tolbert's track and field career remains one of the most impressive in Terrell High School history. As a junior, Tolbert placed in the high jump at the regional qualifiers meet. Tolbert's crowning achievements came during his senior year when he helped lead his Terrell team to the Terrell High School's first ever track and field state championship. And it's also the only track and field state championship. And I don't know if you have had a chance to see this yet, but uh, our administration has, we've been remodeled, we've just refinished our track, redone, put in a brand new track, done a lot of remodeling on that, but we've also fenced it off. And there's a gate that is an in honor of the 1980 track championship. You need to go out there and see it. It is very impressive. Tobert earned a gold medal in the mile relay, a silver medal in the high jump, and set his personal best and district record of six feet, 10 inches in the high jump. Following graduation, Tobert received a scholarship to attend the University of Texas as a member of the track and field team, where he remains listed on the University of Texas's top 10 Longhorns. That is an impressive, impressive thing. And one, one of that that he was being recognized for in at the University of Texas for his seven foot two and a quarter inch high jump at the 1982 Texas Invitational. I couldn't get that high with a mini trim. That is, yeah. Richard and his wife Rhonda have four wonderful children, Bethany, Jessica, Alex, and Alondra. The Tober family also welcomed their first grandchild, a grandson named Jason, in May, I think I see him, of 2018. At this time, I'd like to introduce you to Richard Tober, inductee, Hall of Fame. Uh, 
I am Longhorn, yes. and I'm a terrible type. <laughs> but there's a more accomplished Longhorn in the room <laughs> named Cynthia Rhodes Patterson. <laughs> Also, a, a turtle tiger, amen. 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 This, uh, yeah, we'll go to church. <laughs> You're gonna hear a bunch of amens. <laughs> Trying to write a speech, you know, basically, I just had to get up here and say thank you to a lot of people through my life who have uh, actually made this possible. I was looking at that list of the uh, Hall of Fame members. And I went down through there and I saw old neighbors like Bobby Willie, old teachers like, and principals with bad paddle like Gilbert Willie Sims. <laughs> <laughs> Herman Furlow. One of my dad's all time great friends who was actually here today, Mr. R.L. Gibson. The list goes on and on and on, and, and I could have talked about that, but I ain't wrote this down, so I'm gonna go through here. I thank my family uh, for sticking by me because if you realize how you, you be honest about your life, it's been ups and it's been downs. But my family has stuck with me, and even some of my friends, the ones who are still my friends today, because you know, some friends go away from me. I think Bill Griffin, you know, I heard his, him call my name a couple of times. <laughs> I've been to his office to talk to him about certain things before in my life. I think Money Westbrook, number 17, gave me a call and asked me if I, just asked me a few questions and asked me if I mind him even putting my name in the hat. And to me, that was a blessing because I had never thought about that. So I thank him. I go back to Coach Hayes, who was my seventh grade coach. And all the way up, every year we moved up, he moved up. And one thing about Coach Hayes, I don't even know if he knew our name until we were seniors in high school. <laughs> he always said number 10. 10, go do this, 10, go do that. Albert Joe Robinson who was a year older than I was, and he's the one who taught me how to high jump. I mean, he literally taught me how to high jump. I thank him. Sylvester Sly Holmes, <laughs> who I was so happy to see walked in at the end a while ago, sitting over there with his hat on, amen? <laughs> Tell you something about Sly Holmes. When we lived on the corner of Bradshaw and West End, <laughs> and that bus would come. I don't know why the bus didn't take him down the Sandy Road. But he'd get off that bus, and I'm, I'm, I remember numbers. I'm 33. Number 33 would get off that bus. And you know, if I'm 9, 10 years old at the time, he must have looked like a monster, because he still does. <laughs> he'd walk down that street, and I, you know, I, it's just like somebody, you just run out to the corner, and you, hey. Hey, Sylvester, because he was an excellent athlete and somebody that I wanted to pattern myself after. Coach Daniels, who was my track coach and my wide receiver coach and my friend, still is. And I was going to ask Herbert to tell me what he would say right now, but he just put some food in his mouth. <laughs> Herbert, what would Coach Daniel say right now? I've got a mouthful. I'm going to come back to you because we all need to hear this. <laughs> Bernard Derrick. Uh, I watched Bernard Derrick, who had so much athletic ability. And at one point in his, in his life, he was a bully. And he was arrogant. And he knew how good he was to the point where he wasn't on the football team one year. But then in the summer of his junior year, he, 
it's, it's like it was a transformation from one person to another. He fought hard, changed his ways, became the starting quarterback his senior year. Right out here on his field. He was struck by lightning. Uh, but the story is, is how that stuck with me is how he turned his life around. And the reason I bring him up is because same thing happened to me. I wasn't struck by lightning, but I was struck. Uh, man, y'all forgive me. I uh, was talking to Skeeter yesterday, Bernard's brother. Skeeter was going to try to be here, but he couldn't make it, so he called me yesterday. And we talked about how what we witnessed Bernard do, how he became a man, has helped us in our life now. Uh, I got to go back now to Lewis South, who I don't know if anybody knows. <laughs> Lewis South was my, was my coach when I played for the Cougars. I was probably 11 years old. And we played flag football, them green and white jerseys. And the week before the championship, uh, I had cut my foot really bad and my toe was hanging off and my sister Sharon put it in some hot water and Epsom salt. <laughs> That's something you don't do. That's 500 Francis, South Francis Street. <laughs> but I couldn't get my football shoes on and my mom's allowed me to put on my church shoes and go out and play in the championship game where I dived over the pile in a flag football game for the winning two-point conversion. But Lewis South, he gave us confidence that we could do whatever we wanted to do, even at a young age. Bear with me, my, my brother Larry Bryant and Porter Harris, who dressed me up in my little uniform and put them shoulder pads and helmet on me, and we played on Sunday afternoons against two kids from his church. And they made us play against each other. It taught me how to be competitive. It taught me how to play to win. My sister Sharon, I'm going back to her. Because when your sister is the first person picked on the team <laughs> in your neighborhood, because she can outrun you, out-tackle you, and out-catch you, it motivates you to get better. Now, she said Bob Hayes, which brings me to another person. And I was happy to see him when I walked in. Sitting back there, his name's Charles Nero. Yes, See, in my neighborhood, if you wasn't on Nero's team, you wasn't gonna win. He played wide receiver, and if you were unlucky enough to stand over there in front of him, he was gonna catch a touchdown pass on you. And he had a famous saying, he'd be running down that, that gravel road, and he have his hand up and he holler, Bye Hayes! Bye Hayes! And they throw the ball and Bob Hayes would score. I go back to all of these old memories because these old memories shaped these new ones. I teach my teenagers at, at my church on Sundays. We have teenage church. And you know, I'm not, I'm, I haven't been to theology school or anything like that, but I've read the Bible. And I believe what I read. And the thing is, I look at my life and I can teach 
from the mistakes I made to try to help, like Mr. Griffin was saying, help these younger people to understand that there's gonna be some ups and some downs, some falls, but it's all a journey. It's all a journey. I'm proud of my journey, regardless of what's in it, because it made me better. My dad taught me how to be faithful, not by saying anything, but about what he did. Yeah. He's always been faithful, and especially to his church. So I've always watched him. He's been faithful. And then my mom. Man, if you want to know something about any sport, I think my mom can name every member of the Dallas Stars hockey team. Like some people watch all my children, she watches sports. I remember, and I hope she don't mind me telling this, but this is what told me how much she loved me. <coughs> we were playing rock wall. Oh, <laughs> in rock wall. And there was a lot of late hits and cheap shots going on. And the referee wasn't throwing flags. <coughs> and I got hurt, and a couple, Terrence Burton got hurt, a couple people got hurt. And my mom, was in the stands. And Coach Daniels was over there looking after me. You all right? You all right? And he looked up and said, oh boy, here come your mama. <laughs> <laughs> My mama was on the field. <laughs> coming looking after her. Not just me, but her team. That taught me something about commitment. Regardless of what's going on, if you stay committed to the plan, Stay committed to the journey. Stay committed to your goals. You don't have a choice but to succeed. You might fail in between. But if you stay committed to it to the end, you'll succeed. So I thank my mom for that. Last but not least, you heard me mention my Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. My Lord said Jesus Christ taught me something about long suffering. Yeah. How to be patient. Yeah. How to wait yeah. for your season to come. Yeah. I'm in my season. Richardson Dyer, Bill Griffin, and Richard Tober. Let's thank them again and welcome. <laughs> and at this time, I'd like to introduce our mayor pro tem, Mr. Charles Whitaker. Thank you, everybody, and Richard and Bill. You you've made me speechless, and that's pretty difficult to do. <laughs> Fine gentlemen and Kelly, generation of my girls that graduated from here, and uh, uh, Bill and I have some stories to tell, but this is not the proper venue. Uh, and Richard, you might as well become a preacher. Yeah. Well, you don't want to waste that. But um, I'm glad to represent uh, our great mayor, DJ Rory, filling in for uh, a DJ. And this is from the office of the mayor of the city of Terrell, proclamation that reads, whereas we realize that participation in organized athletics helps to build character and teaches a wholesome sense of fair play and good sportsmanship among our youth. Whereas to really excel in any one sport, a young person must demonstrate in addition to a great deal of natural ability and outstanding spirit of dedication, enthusiasm and hard work. And whereas these candidates dedicated their time and talents above and beyond the call of duty. And whereas these candidates have carried into their daily lives, as we've seen today. 
The precepts and disciplines they learned as well-trained athletes and as hard-working, respectable members of the various communities where they now live and continue to give the very best they have to the game of life. And filling in for our Mayor D.J. Ory, and by the virtue of his authority uh, as mayor and on behalf of the Terrell City Council, we do hereby proclaim October 5th, 2018 as Tiger Hall of Fame Day and the induction of Kelly Richardson Dyer, Bill Griffin, and Richard Tober. I'm always thinking about during these times that we honor people worthy of being honored is you look at their families and it is a wonderful thing to be recognized as a Hall of Fame member. But Bill, your legacy is sitting in your lap, sir. <laughs> Mr. Tober, there's your legacy. Bill, your son, Jonathan, good dog on me. That's your legacy. And that's not to make it anything less important. And this is what I forgot last year, and I swore I'd never do this again. If you are a current Hall of Fame member, please stand. That includes you, Tobin, Bill. That's the cats now in this group. Tigers, I should have said. I apologize. <laughs> There'll be an alumni and a new inductee meeting in the gym, and I think uh, Mr. Wesson is, is going to head that up for, for us. And so afterwards, if you want to meet in the gym, uh, Ron will be in there. One thing I want to say um, to you, Mr. Tolbert, is, is I'm in the room. Now, I don't have a vote, thank God because I don't have enough historical knowledge. But uh, Monty said, hey, I'm gonna nominate this guy, this guy, this guy. He said, it'll speak for itself. So Monty, Mr. Tolbert, and I've been in there several times now, I think this is my sixth year. You were the single quickest unanimous vote I've ever been associated with. I think there was less than a million of conversations. And that takes me to this. I truly believe, and Judy will tell you, that's my secretary, there are some people that have been nominated that should be in this hall. But we can only, that committee can only go off what is written in the applications. <laughs> and there's a big emphasis on all of them about universities and things they did after high school. Well, understand, it's about athletic accomplishments in high school. So if you nominate anybody, and I encourage Hall of Famers, you know the criteria. Make sure the applications are comprehensive. Bill, that was a no-brainer. We see him every Friday night. We get him. But not everybody has 50 years of legacy. All right, that was just a FYI. I'd like to thank Soul Mans, Olivia Rice, Montrell, and Judy Armstrong for doing with the work. And then our food service led by Diana Kidwell. Uh, make sure, uh, inductees, you leave your hats, your jackets, and plaques because we want to represent them to you at, at the football game. And remember, at 6 o'clock, we'll have a reception in, in, the, in the stadium, uh, the, the room where the elevator is, and get out of the elements. It's still kind of hot for October, to be honest with you. I would encourage every one of you, if you have an opportunity to, uh, we're doing construction on the back end of the athletic complex here. We're, you know, you always got to maintain and redo and get better. But if you go out here, we look at the uh, new track in progress. There will be a permanent plaque put up with all these Tigers names on it. And this, this, uh, this spring, we're going to, do a small but dignified 
ceremony, which we'll be Judy will be getting with you or Buster or somebody. We're not gonna let Monique call you. She got an attitude. If y'all don't remember that, but we're okay. So you understand. Then I don't have to apologize. You get it. We just want to honor that. And I found out today by by Mr. Wesson, and, and I, I wasn't a hundred percent sure, but we won a. a uh, state golf championship in 1959. We gotta honor that somehow. All these state championships, whether they're from 52 or 1980, that's a big deal, guys. That means there's only one in the state, you understand? So we need to, you know, if you don't honor the past, how can you move forward? That's my thought process. And we also, thanks to the voters and the wisdom of our school board, we have a beautiful multi-purpose facility over here. And we're gonna open that up to you. And I promise you, athletes in Terrell, Texas, they don't bow down to anybody in regards to facilities and, and weight rooms and things. Because we have the best in our region, I promise you that. And that's because of our taxpayers believe in us. And most of all, they believe in kids. The last thing I'd like to say is, you are personal blessings to me. Sometimes the superintendency is tough, principalship's tough, and it gets, it gets dark because you get tied down with all the negative, you understand? But when you see folks like Mr. Tolbert, Mr. Griffin, Mr. Dyer, all the Hall of Famers, you're encouraged because I'm gonna quote a fellow. It's about the journey. I was inspired by you today, sir. God bless y'all and go Tigers.